Hello there, this is Alana Tucky and we're back for more lecture notes. This time we're in chapter three. Now chapter three is particularly interested in the study of summary statistics, i.e. characteristics that we can measure about samples and populations. So let's take a little quick down memory lane, run down memory lane and let's remind ourselves that there's a difference between a population and a sample. The population is all the individuals, whereas the sample is just a subset of that. Now, if you could measure some characteristic about the whole population, that would be called a parameter. So, for example, if I knew the approval rating of the president for all the people in the U.S., that would be a parameter. Like, pretend it's, I don't know, 55% for all the people. It's a constant, right? It wouldn't change. It just is 55% right now at this moment. But I usually don't know that because I'd have to go ask every single person in the U.S., what would be more likely is I'll go get a sample, which is a subset of that population, and I'll find out what percentage of them approve of the president. And that I can figure out, but it's not the same every time, right? So I get one sample, it'll be 52%, and the next sample, it'll be 58%, and the next sample, it'll be 54%, and so on, right? So it varies from sample to sample, but the population at this moment is just what it is. I usually just can't get it because populations are so large. All right, so let's be a little bit more in depth in this. Let's deal with something called the arithmetic mean. So in section 3.1, we're really interested in the center. That's one of the first things we want to know about a data set. Where is the middle? Where is the average? Now, there are a few different types of averages that we're going to learn. And the first one is the one that most of you probably think of when you think, hear the word average. Um, you think of the arithmetic mean which isn't necessarily what you should be using as the average all the time, but that's generally what people think of. It means that you add up all the data points and you divide by the number in the sample or in the population. So for this one, this would be a population arithmetic mean, and it's got this little Greek symbol, mu, M-E-W is how you'd pronounce it, and mu is how you spell it, right? mu. And it means that it's the population mean. It's for everybody. So for example, if I could put a thermometer in all human beings on the planet right now, that value would be a parameter. You know, let's pretend it's like, you know, I don't know, 98.2 degrees. Hold on. There we go. All right. Now, what if I just want a sample? All right, which is much more realistic, let's face it, for the human body temperature. Well, then that's called a statistic, if I could spell it, <laughs> okay, statistic. And the sample mean is abbreviated X bar. See, X, and it's got a little bar on his head. And yes, you are going to have to know both of those symbols very well through this course. And what's more, you're going to have to understand that there's a difference between the two, which I talk about right down here. So in the notes, you can fill this out. Mu and X bar will not be the same, but they should be close as long as you took a random unbiased sample. Now, how close is close? That's what the whole back half of the course is about, um, what we will cover in chapters 9, 10, 11, and so on. Um, that's called inferential statistic. Was it, excuse, me, excuse me, inferential statistics. When you take a sample, and you infer from there how the population would be. So for example, I get the average body temperature from human beings in my sample to be, I don't know, 98.4. And I assume from there that's what it is for the whole population, even though I now know in actuality it was 98.2 for all the people. See? So the 98.2 will stay, 98.2, whatever. And then the statistic will vary around that, 98.3, 98.35, 98.25, 98.267, etc. They won't be the same, but they should be close to each other. The bigger the sample and the better the sample you took, you might imagine, the closer it will be. So the bigger sample and better sample, right, the closer the population and, oh, excuse me, the parameter it's actually true for all of them. It's not just true for the means and statistic will be. All right, awesome. Cool. All right, now let's think about the mean as a balance point. Um, the mean is the value that, if you imagine the whole, and I do it kind of down here for a dot plot, imagine that this is on kind of a seesaw 
where would you put the fulcrum so that the two sides balanced each other? Well, in this example, there's 435 representatives. These are the number of representatives in U.S. Congress by state. And there are 50 states. So if you take 435 and you divide it by 50, you'll get 8.7. And then this is a mu value because this is the whole population. This is all the representatives in states there are. I didn't take a sample of states. I didn't say, take 10 states at random and find the representatives there. Mm -mm. Right? So because I didn't do that, it's, it's mu. It's the whole population. Where would that sit? That would sit right about... Mm, that stack right there is 9. The stack right to the left of it is 8. So it's 8.7. So it's just a little bit shy of the center of the 9 stack. There we go. In fact, I'll make it a little bit thicker and green. There we go. All right. Now let's do it ourselves. So you're going to find out how many pets each person in our class has. And now I just made up these numbers, so you can copy them down. Um, and we are going to compute the mean using both Excel and StatCrunch. And of course, this is where if you're following along, if your instructor assigns this as an assignment, then you'll have to create a spreadsheet and follow along. So I'm going to type these values in here. So number of pets. Sorry if this is boring, but <laughs> I don't know how to pause my video maker yet, so <laughs> I'll figure that out eventually. There we go. Now it's kind of weird because if you look at it, we end on person number 32, but if you look at the Excel, it ends on 33 and you think, oh, uh oh, something's not right. Well, it's actually okay. Um, let me just highlight all of those numbers so you can see. If I highlight just the numbers, you can see that it's got 32 rows here. You can see it, it's kind of floating near my cursor. See where it says 32RX1C? That means 32 rows. If I lift up, you can also see it down here in the count right there. Okay. So if I have 32 rows, one column, that means that I had 32 data points, right? Great. That's exactly what we want. And while I'm at it, I'm going to make it so this is a little bit wider. So I'm going to move my cursor up here so that it's kind of halfway between the A and the B. See how it turns into a double-sided arrow? If I double click, it makes it so that it fits the widest thing in my data set. Cool. All right, so let me go back. Oh, oh, before I go anywhere, if I've got to turn this in, I'm going to do File, Save As. And I'm just going to save it to my desktop. You save it to whatever folder you want. I'm, I'm actually going to call it this. I'm going to replace my old one. Yep, I'm OK with that. It's a long story, but I already made these videos once, and um, my files died, so <laughs> we're going to remake them. Okay, and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see better. Now, if you're wondering how I did that, I controlled and then scrolled with my mouse button. The other way is down here in the right corner. See that zoom bar? So you can, there's 100%, there's 178%, 184%. You can fiddle around. You can use the plus and minus signs, too. That'll work. All right, awesome. Now, they want us to find the mean, and of course, if I'm going to turn this in, or even if I'm not, it pays to label what you're doing and make it very clear. So my first cell was A2, colon, my last cell was A33, and parentheses, enter. Now, if you don't want to do it that way, you can um, highlight. So equals average, parentheses, and then I can click and drag my mouse down, and then I get to the last cell, and I lift up. And then you can see it typed A2 colon A33 up there. Close my parentheses, enter. And now for the sake of my own sanity, I will bold them and make them, I don't know, I'm feeling yellow. Cool. You can make it whatever color you want. Knock yourself out. Just make it easy to read, right? No black on black. That would be hard. Oops. And we don't need the median yet. But we do need to know how to do it in StatCrunch. So let me go to StatCrunch. Oops. Here it is. Now remember, you can just go to statcrunch.com and then sign in using your same course compass, my math lab username and password. Now I need to get those numbers, and I already typed them once, so I'm just going to highlight all my data. Oh, I did that really fast by it here. I click on this cell, I hold down the control and shift button together, I press the down arrow, and then it highlights all the columns, and then I go, or excuse me, all the numbers. So I go to copy. 
and then I go back to stack crunch and I click right here and I go um, paste control V and there they are and then I can backspace and then type number of pets cool then you go to stat summary statistics columns and this is a really important thing to know how to do not because we couldn't find it with Excel but because well you'll see why in a second so I click on the number of co uh, pets column it automatically puts it over here saying hey I'll run summary statistics on this next and you can see all the things it's going to do for us and the mean is right in there which is good because I wanted to calculate the mean and actually I'm going to add IQR to the list because we'll need that later and then I click calculate and then there they are options copy I'll go back to and I'll click on some empty cell and it's going to paste horizontally so I want to make sure that it's pretty empty to the right of that and then again I'm going to make a double arrow and double click and it kind of re um, adjusts the columns and there's the mean right there I'll highlight it in the same color I picked before cool so now I know how to find the mean and it was 2.3125. Now notice this is an X bar because our class is a sample. Um, it, it's a sample of all JCC students. It's a sample of all students. It's a sample of, I don't know, people in Jackson County, whatever. But it's a sample, so it's, it only deserves an X bar, not a mu like this one was because this was the whole population. All right, so we know how to find it with Excel and StatCrunch. We copied and pasted, and I'm going to save again. That way, when I have to submit this file, it'll all be there. Cool. All right, so next time we will have a video on the median. I'll see you then.